Good evening. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's flipped classroom video. Tomorrow in class, we are going to be doing something called investigating the hundreds chart. When we investigate the hundreds chart, we are kind of acting like detectives. And we want to look at our hundreds chart to see what kind of patterns we notice or to see anything that we see is the same in a column or row. When you look at a hundreds chart, the rows go side to side in groups of 10. Here's one row, two rows, three, row four, row five, row six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. A hundreds chart is made up of 10 rows of 10. The numbers going up and down are called columns. A hundreds chart is also made up of 10 columns going up and down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 rows of 10 or 10 columns of 10 give us 100 boxes on a hundreds chart. Take a minute and look at this hundreds chart. What patterns do you notice in the rows or in the columns? Let me tell you some patterns that I see. I'm going to use my magnifying glass to investigate my hundreds chart. I notice in my columns, the ones place always stays the same. I have my ones place magnified in my magnifying glass. My one stays the same all the way down my column. If I hop over to where the three is in the ones place, my three stays the same all the way down the column in the ones place. When I look at the tens place in my column, I notice that the tens place is always increasing by one. There is no number in the tens place here because one is a single digit. But as I move down my column, my tens place increases by one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The same things happen if I hop over to this column. My eight stays the same in the ones place all the way down the column. And my tens place is increasing by one each time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's one pattern I notice in the columns on my hundreds chart. There's also patterns we can see in the rows. The rows are kind of the opposite of the columns. In the rows, the ones place is always increasing by one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But my tens place always stays the same. One, 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 and so on through the row. Now when we get to the end of our row, we are counting by tens down the last column of our hundreds chart. And that is a pattern that I see here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 
We can also use our hundreds chart to count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and so on. If you notice, the fives are always in the same column in the ones place on our hundreds chart, and the tens are always in the same column on our hundreds chart. You might see some more patterns on our hundreds chart. If there are any more patterns that you see, feel free to talk about them in class tomorrow. I can use the patterns that I notice to help me figure out missing numbers. If you look on our first slide, I have a missing number covered in purple. I remember the pattern in this column is counting by tens. I can use that pattern to help me figure out the missing number. Let's count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. What number do you think is under the purple box? Let's see if you're right. If you said 60, great job. Let's look at our next missing number on the hundreds chart. Ooh, this one's right in the middle of our hundreds chart and might be a little trickier to figure out. I can use what I learned about columns and rows to figure out this missing number. If I used what I learned about columns, I know that the ones place always stays the same. So this ones place must be a four, and I know that the tens place always increases by one. One, two, three, four. If you think you know what the missing number is under the blue box, say it to yourself. I could also use what I learned about patterns in rows to figure out this missing number. In my rows, I know that the ones place always increases by one. One, two, three. And I know that the tens place needs to stay the same. Five, five, five. The number under the box is the number 54. If you guessed 54, good job. Let's try another one. What number do you think is under the red box? Use any of the patterns we've talked about to figure out that number. I also know that I can start anywhere on the hundreds chart and continue counting to find a missing number. I don't have to start all the way at one and count till I get to that red box. If I know how to count one to 100, I can start anywhere on my hundreds chart to figure out a missing number. Maybe I want to start at 66, and I know what comes after 66. 66. Maybe I want to start at 61. 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. What do you think the number is under the red box? If you guessed 67, good job. Tomorrow in class, we are going to be talking about more patterns we see on the hundreds chart, if you saw any others, and we're going to continue discussing the ones that we talked about tonight. Using any of the patterns we've talked about, 
On your homework sheet is the question, what number was under the green square? Figure out for me right now what number is under that green square and write the answer on your homework sheet. You will find out tomorrow in class if you picked the correct number. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time.